What is an integral? Well, let's think back to single variable calculus where it was easy to define integrals. <laughs> easy, right? Okay, well, I do recall that integrals came in two types, the definite and the indefinite integral. They had similar notation. They both involved that long squiggly S sign, and they both had an integrand f of x dx, but the definite integral had bounds of integration. We would say x goes from, say, a to b. Okay, that's one difference, but there's more. The definite integral is a number. This is a scalar valued operation, whereas indefinite integration returns a function, or rather a class of functions, all the same up to a local constant. Okay, so that's one difference. There are some more differences. There's a difference just in terms of definitions. The definite integral was defined in terms of a limit of Riemann sums. Ow, I remember that. That was a little painful. In contrast, the indefinite integral was easy to define. It's just an antiderivative. Yay, don't forget the constant. Everything's fine. Now, why did we bother doing definite integrals when they're so devilish? Well, they're so useful. They're used to compute area, volume, work, force, present value, future value, all kinds of values. Whereas the indefinite integral was useful, but it was primarily useful for computing definite integrals thanks to the fundamental theorem of integral calculus. Okay, that's single variable calculus. Now it's time to move up, up to higher dimensions where our integrands now have multiple inputs. We're going to assume f has n inputs, one output, just like we did in Taylor series or optimization. We're going to work one output at a time. Now, we have to define integrals, so let's follow the same pattern. Let's say we've got a definite or an indefinite. Which one do we want to do first? Uh, I'm going to choose the indefinite integral. That's probably much nicer. So what happens when we try to redo what we did in single variable calculus? Back in the day, we had a function f, one input, one output. When we compute the derivative of f, we get a new function, f prime, with one input and one output. The input is where you evaluate the derivative. The output is what the derivative evaluates to at that point. Remember, slope of a tangent, things like that. Okay, well, here's the thing. The derivative is the same type of function as we started with. So we can invert, we can anti-differentiate, and we can make sense of the indefinite integral there. But when we have a multivariate function, if f has n inputs in one output, what happens when we take the derivative? Well, the derivative is now a linear transformation at every single point. It's, it's not exactly the same type of function that we started with. If I evaluate the derivative at a particular location, I'm not getting a scalar value. Rather, I'm getting a linear transformation. That means that trying to anti-differentiate uh, sort of fails. It seems like this is not going to work because in the multivariate setting, we don't have the same type of function. So the indefinite integral, I'm not feeling so good about that. Maybe it's time to turn to the definite integral and think about how we could generalize that instead.